It's been a long day. Um, okay. So, let me tuck that in there. Um, we have had a busy week this week. Um, so, and I'm sorry I did not get a video filmed and uploaded yesterday. Um, uh, it didn't work out because I actually was up at my church all day. Um, I will, um, go ahead and start putting pictures right over here for you if you want to see what we did in our church yesterday. Um, our children's ministry director is a very, very good friend of mine, and she decided to do a, um, theme that's kind of a spin on the movie Tangled called Untangled, and we spent the day, a few of us, uh, went up to our church, and we, I was up there from... About 9.30 is when I left the house um, to go up there, and I did not get home until close to 5 o'clock last night um, from decorating the church. We spent all day up there. We had the kids up there, um, and we just had a lot of fun. And so I did that all day yesterday, and then by the time I got home, um, I had a massive mess to clean up because right before we left, um, I had little ones who decided that it would be fun to decorate the floor with snow, which is commonly known as baby powder um, to the rest of the world. So I had to clean that up really quickly before my husband got home because I didn't want him to come home to that. And then I went out for my first and third uh, Thursday mom's night out. Um, several of us get together and we go do things. Typically, we meet up with our chapter of A Girl and a Gun. Um, if you haven't heard of them before, I will definitely link um, to their organization below. Essentially, it is an all-women's shooting league, and we meet up twice a month, and we go over all kinds of things, like IDPA-style shooting. Um, if anybody needs to take the shooting portion of their license to carry for our state, um, they are welcome to do so then as well, as long as they set it up with our leader, so to speak, uh, facilitator, and, um, you know, we have weekly updates regarding safety or shooting tips and things like that, um, and I know that definitely guns are not, um, for everybody for a while. They were not for me, um, but it's something that I've really gotten into, and I feel like if we are going to have, um, a firearm in our house that, um, I definitely need to be well versed and very safe and very knowledgeable about it and so I go um, twice a month to that. However, last night a bunch of us were so tired from decorating the church, we decided to forego shooting because either we had headaches or like with me, I painted a castle so my arms were tired from, you know, holding the paper and painting and, um, and I just didn't feel like I would have... Um, very much fun with these sore achy shoulders and arms you know holding my uh pistol trying to do target practice so we forewent that and we decided to go out to eat and had a blast anyway i mean it's awesome if you do not have a good group of girlfriends you need one <laughs> um i never had one to this extent before in my life until the last year and I'm I every day just wake up so thankful and blessed by them and wondering why I didn't have a group of ladies like this in my life sooner um so it's really awesome so anyway that's why I did not get a video um filmed and uploaded so and then I also noticed today, for whatever reason, today was the first day I noticed it that the last podcast I did apparently did not load correctly. So I'm going to see if I can go back and find it and reload that for y'all as well. So I'm sorry. I didn't know. Um, sorry about that. Um, and then what else? Um, I am working on a new website. Um, currently my blog is just, you know, the nitty muggings at, on Blogspot. Um, but I have registered the domain name and am working on getting all of that set up, so that's exciting as well. And of course, y'all can always find me um, as the Nitty Megans on Facebook, and I have all my links um, and on Ravelry and all that. You can find the links for that um, on my main um, page. So there's that. Um, so we'll get into knitting stuff. Um, we will start with finished 
off objects. I really did not have a lot of knitting time lately. It's really been um, a couple of weeks of just, you know, I had, uh, this week was really busy trying to get back on track with school and trying to really focus on my family and helping out at the church and so on and so forth. And so that didn't really allow for a lot of knitting. And then the week before that um, was when I was undergoing all of my tests, the biopsies and ultrasounds and so on. Um, so if you did not watch the video that I posted last week, that was more of just, you know, day in the life, silly family <coughs> things. I have no idea. Who are you barking at? Um, I have been having several issues um, for a while now and I went through a lot of tests and biopsies and ultrasounds and so forth and last week. And... Um, it, I am waiting for all the results to come back, but it looks like I will probably be having a hysterectomy next month, um, a partial hysterectomy. So that will definitely allow me plenty of time for taking it easy and knitting because I will have a six week recovery because I have to have it done old school style. So um, yeah, um, and it may scare people. I get asked a lot if that scares me. It doesn't scare me very much just because um, have faith that God will take care of me and I have an awesome doctor and we have an awesome OR staff here. And... What is it? You don't need any candy. Candy is for movie time later. Hold on just a minute. She needs a snack. Crisis averted. She has a cheese stick and ham. Okay, so... Um, anyway, between all the testing last week and all of the trying to catch up on everything this week, um, I haven't had a lot of knitting. That, and I've had to pour a whole, whole lot more than usual into my kids because, um, to be very honest, everything just kind of got um, wonky and I didn't, didn't really pour into them like I should have been lately. Um, I'm, I have not been super mindful over things lately and so things little heart issues were starting to pop up that I felt like needed to be addressed so I've really been more mindful of, of uh, working with them and ministering to them versus um, knitting and having a little bit more hands-off time during the day so so there's that so I don't have a lot of finished offs to show you um, I did when I was I had a few days between my initial checkup and then when I had to go back for, I went from my initial checkup on a Monday, I had to go back on a Wednesday um, for the biopsy and ultrasound. And so, and then, so between the, that time, between Monday afternoon and later in the morning on Wednesday, um, I had this time where it was just like, what are we going to do, you know? Um, what's what's going to happen what's the surgical you know what's going to happen because for a while it was like ablation hysterectomy we weren't really sure um and so i was trying to kind of just process my kid's going outside to play ball um process everything as it was coming in um oh and as i was saying earlier i totally blanked on this um uh I, have, I had been asked a, quite a bit if I was nervous about having um, surgery to begin with, and as I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm really not because um, we have great staff and great doctor and, and great God and everything else. Um, but I was also told when I had my last little one that I would be unable to have any more children. So while yes, I'm still young in the eyes of several people as when it comes to this type of surgery, I'm 35. Um, not like I was going to need that body part anyway anymore, so it doesn't bother me that it's going away. Um, so, um, you guys get to go on that journey with me. Yay, aren't you excited? Um, so hopefully I can get that scheduled for late, mid to late April. I'm waiting to hear back from my doctor. I was supposed to hear back from her by today. I haven't yet. Um, and her office is closed. So I'm sure I'll hear from her early in the week. I'm sure there was probably some holdup with either um, 
results coming in or, you know, she is an OBGYN. She probably had to go deliver some babies, so who knows. But, uh -oh, I've got a door coming at me. Y'all are like circling the house, missing each other. Go stand in the hallway, you'll find her. If she comes this way, I'll send her back around that way at you, okay? Um, so anyway, between Monday and Tuesday, when it was narrowed down to ablation or hysterectomy, um, I was trying to just kind of think and process things. And so what I did was I did this dishcloth. Um, I used <clears throat> peaches and cream in bright blue, 100% cotton. Um... And so I went ahead and did this. The pattern can be found online. Man, it's kind of hard to pick up really, really well. Um, there, that picks it up pretty good. Um, the pattern for this dishcloth you can find on Stacy Perry's website. Um, verypink.com and she also has a tutorial on how to actually do this on her YouTube channel Very Pink Knits and it's under um, I believe it's Fancy Stitch or Fancy Stitch Combo and it's the Chevron Stitch and she shows you how to turn practicing the stitch into an actual dishcloth which I like because I'm always up for that um, and something I can tell in some parts of the work that you don't see in other parts was my tension going back between large portions of purl stitches versus knit stitches and that's I love dishcloths because you get to work on building your skill level and then you get something that's actually useful out of it um, so I made that and then with the leftover yarn out of that skein I between um, Wednesday well not Wednesday because after I got home a few you know I kind of spent the day on the couch after the biopsy because to be really brutally honest I was not feeling my most awesome that day it wasn't anything horrible I just wasn't feeling great um, and so um, I pretty much parked it on the couch and didn't do anything and I rested I love you too so Thursday Friday Saturday um, I made this one, and this is the granite relief stitch. This is another fancy stitch that you can find um, on Stacy's YouTube channel, um, and I will link these below. Anyway, it's not as big as this one. I mean, you can see the length is the same, but the width, and that's just simply because I was running out of yarn, and I started playing yardage chicken, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to cut it short. Um, but really, I you know more than anything I use these to when I spray down my t my kitchen table and wipe it down between meals and school and everything that happens at our at our kitchen table or when I'm just wiping off you know um, the countertops or the stove or what have you so there's that um works in progress I'm still working on my husband's scarf pretty much because I just flat don't want to knit it it's the most boring thing on God's green earth I can't stand it I cannot stand his scarf it's 50 inches of mock ribbing and it is the most boring thing I think I have ever knit in my entire life y'all it is awful it is um no ma'am um mock ribbing if you don't know about it is um knit one purl one on row one and then knit all in the back and um it's just those two rows over and over over and over over and over over and over and i swear i'm gonna lose my my mind on that um i don't even have it over here because i literally have just chunked it somewhere i need to find out where i stuck it and then the other thing i'm working on is a pair of another pair of rose city rollers socks but i think i've left that knitting bag um in my car and to be quite honest i mean if you cannot tell i am super tired today and i just didn't feel like going out there and getting it I mean, you can see my other Rose City Roller socks and you'll see them when they're finished off. Or I'll bring them over here when I do another video because um, I'm like halfway through sock one. So I'll be working on it when I do the next video, I promise. I'm not that fast. And then this is another dishcloth I was working on. Um, and this is Peaches and Cream. I forget the name of the actual color. I'll have to go back and look it up. Um... And it started off really, really cute, and it was going to be an owl. 
you can kind of see the the feathers here and the wings here and the beginning of the beak and the eyes. Um, but it's one of those you have to pay really, really close attention to what row you were on. And this, as of last night, and early, again, early this morning, my daughter got my clip counter and I had, didn't have it locked or tucked away. And she messed up what row I was on. So <clears throat> it's getting frogged because I have no idea what row it was on. So I'm going to physically print out that pattern and highlight as I go. <laughs> and then that way I can actually get it done. So I will have this for the next video I make if I actually get to make it because I really want to because I love owls. So this is going to be frogged. It happens. It's not worth yelling at a kid over. It's just yarn. It's not that big of a deal. So. I'll go ahead and finish frogging this later. I'm already down to the lacy type stitches. Anyway, and that was a $2 pattern on Ravelry. I'll have all the information when I do it again. Okay, and then new knitting supply type stuff. One is in this lovely bag here, and that is my kids love to run off with my retractable um, measuring tapes. And my knitting stuff, really since I went to Georgia and came back, my knitting stuff is all over the place. I have a video I took before I started this and I'm going to have it at the very end so you can see. It's truly like a total chaotic mess. <clears throat> and one thing that kept wandering off was my tape measure. So I ordered a pack of four because a pack of four was I think two dollars more than just getting one singular one. Um, and they're not cute. I looked at really cute ones but they were more money than I just could stomach spending on something my kids are probably going to run off on. Run off with and with um, with the fact that the kids will steal it if it's super cute, just was that much more. So I have four of these plain blue ones. And what I'm thinking is um, I may design my own stickers and stick them on the back um, to cuten them up. Because I have a silhouette, so I can definitely do that. Okay. So I have that. The other thing is I keep having knitting notebooks and they keep running away from me. Um, so when I'm wanting to show you stuff, half the time I'm like, yeah, I don't even know, and I don't know what I used, and so, um, I was at Walmart last night buying stuff for our homeschool co-op, and I saw this, and I thought, that's cute, that's small, that'll fit in just about every knitting bag I have, so I grabbed this, and it has a little pocket right here in the front, um, so I can tuck a pattern that I have folded up in there whenever I have a paper pattern. Um, so I have that. And I found a book I wanted to get so bad. It was a journal. And it was a had 221B Baker Street on the front of it. It looked like the door for 221B Baker Street. And it was, it was so cool. I wanted it so bad. But I didn't get to. Um, oh, hey, look. There's stuff in here that probably wasn't supposed to be in here. Um, hmm. interesting, uh, yeah, that wasn't supposed to be in there at all, I bet. There's, um, these little deals, anyway, just was in here as I opened them up. Um, no, we're not doing, I need to sneeze, <coughs> sneeze, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I guess that's why you should always check. I got this as a little motions bag, and it's just a little cheap pencil bag that I got at Walmart last night. Um, there was another one that I really liked that was blue and glittery, but I have a thing with butterflies, so I decided to go ahead and get the butterflies. I'll go back and get the blue one, blue glittery one, another day. And then for stash enhancements, I think I showed one of these last week, or last video. I don't remember for sure, so I'll show it again since I couldn't watch the video from the last one that I did because I couldn't get it to load. Okay, so for my Kitterly, I get the the bigger project kit from Kitterly every month. Um, and pretty much what it is, is in the past I was um, had post stitch, which I really enjoyed, but for the same cost as post stitch, I can get one the main Kitterly kit and also the yarn box socks shipment every month for for almost the same exact price and that's because while I loved 
post stitch, what they did was they sent you everything you needed. So every little notion, you know, the stitch markers, the, the, um, you know, stitch holders, the row counters, the needles. Okay. So they would send you everything you needed and, um, needles and everything. And I mean, it got to the point where I felt overrun with supplies that I didn't need. Um, or were like duplicates, triplicates, triplicates, or four or five times what I already had. And it was just like, okay, I can't do this. And I was essentially paying for stuff that I already had. Um, because I already have all of those things. So it felt silly for me to pay for things that I already had. And to pay that extra amount. Um, so really I just wanted to have the yarn in the patterns. Or even just yarn. Um, and so that's how I came to where I'm at now. So I got my Kitterly shipment in. Um, and when I first got their email showing the pattern and a yarn sample, I thought, oh, dear God, I will never, ever make that. That is not me at all. Um, so I thought, well, when I get the yarn in, I guess I'm just going to like make it and give it to somebody as a gift or figure out another project for that yarn or I don't know. I don't know. That's nothing I would ever do. Then I got the yarn in, and it's not at all what was in the picture, and I like this a lot more. And this is String Quartet, Quintet, sorry, and Clarinet. Uh, this is Lorna's Laces, which I have, I have Lorna's Laces. I'm going to kill that boy if he messes with my door again. Uh, for the Downton Abbey 2016 Mystery Knit Along, which I still need to work on. Um... But I've done a swatch with the yarn, and it came out. I, I loved working with it. Um, and so I have it. It's kind of uh, this tan, the dark brown, the black, the dark gray, the light gray. So I like these colors. This, this, I could work with. And this is what it says. February this year is extra special. By the way, I got this on February 28th. Oh, you want to come sit with me? Your tummy? Yeah. Um, so, um, I don't get it till the very end of the month. So I kind of, I have to admit, I kind of giggled when it says February this year is extra special because it's a leap year. We get a whole extra day of knitting at the end of the month. Well, I only had it for one day of the month and that was the leap year day. To keep you occupied, we're sending you a special kit club fit for the month that holds Valentine's Day, one that brings lots of romance, love, and relationships. Again, I didn't get it till the end of the month. Which is not a big deal. It's not like I couldn't knit anything else in the meantime. And I'm not that picky of a person. But I did that part up at the very top, didn't it? And it says, This much shipment, Isn't It Romantic by Stephanie Talent, featuring Lorna Lace's String Quintet. Um, and all it says is, Isn't It Romantic? It definitely is. The sweeping crescent-shaped shawl starts with garter and ends with whimsical flowers. It's a shawl to make you think of harps, keep it, and nights where magical things can happen with the people you love. Uh, designer Stephanie Talent has been knitting on and off since junior high. Kiddos to her. Her first foray after a neighbor showed up, showed her the basics was to make a cabled sweater. Wow, I have not even thought about doing that for myself. She started it up again when she was in, in the army station in Germany working on several color work sweaters then in the early 2000s and now working as a small animal veterinarian. She got the urge to knit once more. This time it stuck and she started coming up with her own beautiful designs. Um, and then it, it keeps kind of talking and it says, um, in the fall of 2002, she became the owner of Lorna's Laces, um, which had started as a small farm with a few sheep and angora rabbits and grown from there. Um, so, um, apparently there are different versions of string quintet, um, and it's the colorway I got was clear in it. That's fine. I like this colorway. This is my colorway. If you look in my closet, these are the primary colors you're going to find in my closet. I mean, hello, look. Dark gray. Dark gray. Um, and the little picture I saw, I don't know if it really does it justice because the way that it's describing the shawl sounds like something I might actually wear. So, I got to go check into this more. I got to do my due diligence. Um, so I was really excited to, to see that. Um, I got an email that, she's going, shh, as she opens the super noisy door. Um, 
that March is Madeline Tosh month at Kimberly. So I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed Shh, that I get Madeline Tosh this month from them. If I do, I love Mad Tosh. Um, oh, and then with the Kidderly kit, I also got these like super cute heart-shaped stitch markers. I have a bunch of stitch markers, but these are super cute. I can't help it. So that was cool. Um, so yay! That worked out a lot better than I was hoping. So I was seriously going, oh, oh my gosh, maybe I can like, I don't know. I didn't know what I was going to do with what I thought I was doing. I don't know. Um, Stop opening the, the noisy door, please. Don't open that door again, please. Use the other one, okay? Can you use the other door? Thank you. And then what I think I may have sent, uh, shown off in the last video, but I can't see it. So if you see it twice, once I reload the last, the last one, that's fine. Um, is my yarn box that I get and uh, this was the February one. It's, it does work out pretty good because I typically get yarn box at the beginning of the month and Kitterly at the end. I think my husband just came. So this is what I got. And my husband come home and I had a sad one that needed mommy's lap come join me. So anyway, this is my yarn box socks yarn that I got. Um, and it's silver sock fingering, 420 yards, superwash merino wool, silk, nylon, and silver. Um, and it's, the colorway is Athena, and it's this beautiful, um, variegated yarn. It has all different shades of blue and this, like, beautiful shimmer to it. I don't even know if you can really see the shimmer in it. Anyway, what do you think about this yarn? You like it? Is it soft? Hey, is it soft? Oh, yeah, it's very young. Is it, is it squishy? That is mushy. Is mushy? Mushy. Smushy. And soft. And soft. Like that. That's kind of how I am when I get my yarn for the first time. Oh. Yeah. That's soft. Mm-hmm. So that's it for... That's a little yacht! <laughs> for anything new that I have. So, there you go. So, um, yeah, that's it. Ooh, hold on, the necklace just got caught in your hair. So that's it for us for now. Um, but hopefully you guys are doing great. I'm Yep. Yeah. I'm out. Yes. Um, so, go ahead. Okay, just a second. I'm going to take these kiddos outside because they are going a little bonkers. So we're going to go outside and play. And we will catch you another day. Leave me a link below if you have a video. Or leave a comment and let me know. I want a fish tin shirt. Yes. Because that is up to me. Yes. Um, let me know what you're working on or what you've found in the knitting community. That's awesome. So we will see you again in two weeks with another knitting podcast. Bye, guys. This is the current state of my knitting stash corner. It's bad, y'all. It's bad, bad. It's got to give. I've got to get this under control. He wants to come help me. It's bad. <laughs>